it is uh, a legacy of the ICTY and it needs to be recognized as such that its success and uh, together of course with the, what happened uh, at the ICTR has given the international community the confidence for establishing the more permanent uh, framework through the ICC process. I'd like to say that, uh, and this is sort of uh, a question that was grappled with in the first session today and a bit of this, the second session, what has been the legacy for the ICTY to the countries in the Balkans that were involved in the conflict and, and in, in, for in, in terms of the national judiciaries. Uh, the international and the national have up to this moment remained separate streams. The ICTY is, as it were, a sort of superstructure uh, that doesn't, uh, was not designed originally or conceived to relate uh, with the national, national processes. But the success that we think we are, we, we are able to see and observe about the ICTY should give the international community the confidence to have a structure that has direct formal relationships, judicial relationships between the national and the international. Uh, judiciaries relate through appeals and through judicial review. Uh, the, the suggestion I would like to make is, is it possible, and this is, I'm being provocative, is it possible now to move forward to the next level where it is, you have an appeals uh, sort of mechanism within the an ICTY like process that is invoked as a last resort by national processes. So if you reach a last uh, court of, uh, the, la the highest court of appeal in the national process, you sort okay. of have a review possibility. Uh, you would have to have in place mechanism for ensuring that it is not invoked fr frivolously mm -hmm. and that it, it doesn't lead to delay. Okay. But uh, I think that, the, the, that debate maybe needs okay. to enter the international uh, discussion. Thank you very okay. much. Sure. Let's stay in the back, um, please. Yeah. In, we'll, we'll move up uh, in a minute. Yeah, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Eric Stover. I'm with the University of California at Berkeley. Uh, my question is for Mr. Hawking. I was glad to hear uh, you mentioned outreach and uh, wanting to revamp and um, increase those activities. Could you give us some more specifics of what in you intend to do? and how you'll coordinate those activities with the other uh, national courts and with civil society. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, this gentleman right here. Yeah, please. Yeah, go. It, it, we'll come to you in a moment, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Voila. Uh Thank you. I must uh, inquire of the moderator if I'm entitled to thank someone. You said we're entitled to giving our comments and asking questions. Thank you. I will avail myself of this opportunity since we are nearing the end of the two-day uh, conference to thank Mr. Robinson, the president of the ICTY, who uh, was the first one to muster strength, to put it that way, to tell the Security Council that the victims from the region, that's to say from the area of the former Yugoslavia, have not received any compensation and do not enjoy rights that uh, are rightful theirs by the international conventions. So on behalf of all the victims from the region, I would like to thank Mr. Robinson for uh, making that presentation on our behalf before the UN Security Council and thus raised an issue which will um, bring to light uh, the resolution of this issue and will bring uh, just uh, compensation to the victims that is rightfully theirs. If I may also make another brief point uh, rather than ask a question. Well, it has to do with the archives. Our position is, and we base it on the history that we have experienced for the, for, experienced for the past century, um, our, our, our experience has been that our archives have always been located elsewhere. My um, ancestors have never had the opportunity of teaching me what, what, what had happened. We heard here today that the archives should go beyond uh, what had happened uh, uh, previously, once we had our archives in Turkey, at other times in Austria. So I would like to appeal not only to the panelists, but to all those present in the conference hall, that they should have understanding for the fact that our um, <clears throat> Posterity should be able to learn about their history uh, locally in their country uh, without having to go to Austria or elsewhere. We have uh, 
devastating situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina where the children in the primary and secondary education are not entitled to learn about the 1991 to 1995 period. So my child is, will not be aware of the fact that a genocide took place in Srebrenica in 1995 unless I tell him about it. And this applies to all other children. They are not even aware of Celebic having happened or any other crimes because this has been banned from history lessons in Bosnia. And it is a disaster. If our archive is to leave the region, I'm afraid that I will have to agree with Mr. Cicic, who said see you uh, in the next war. This, will not, um, be, this would not be good for either the region or, or, or the world. The outreach program offered by the registrar is an ad hoc solution, just as the tribunal is. We want a lasting solution. We want the archives to be placed in our region in order for the people in Bosnia and Herzegovina to be able to learn from it and in order for the next generation to come to know what happened so that history would not repeat itself. Thank you. I'm going to uh, have this gentleman. I know I had said three questions. Uh, please go ahead, sir. Try to keep it brief, and uh, then we'll take a uh, panel response. Smile, check it. That's why I have a comment. Smile, check it. I have a comment and a proposal. I followed the activities of this conference with great attention and great interest all your intensive and vivid discussions as described by the moderator. Observing your work, I found that my conviction is now even deeper, namely that the legacy of the ICTY is of historic importance. It is an inestimable, priceless treasure. But two key issues also arise before the tribunal, namely the preservation and future use of the, its legacy. But for it to be preserved and... Very brief. Mean to demean the importance of them or your views, um, please keep it brief. Well, briefly, it is now the responsibility of the United Nations to use the opportunity and remain consistent with the principles of the Charter and the principles of the Security Council and wrap up this key period in the application of international law by successfully rounding off the mandate of the ICTY, determining a proper location of the archive and modalities for preserving the legacy. Uh, we have a number of other questions to address, and with all respect, I. I, I'd like to move on. I'm also cognizant uh, uh, of questions that, that others have raised. Um, so if, with your, with your uh, kindness, uh, we'll move forward. Um, let's take some of these questions, uh, and really uh, uh, starting with the issue of uh, uh, a new version of a hybrid tribunal, if you will, an internationally constituted appeals chamber. Uh, any thoughts or views from any of the panelists, uh, 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 an appeals chamber that would be available, if you will, as a court of last resort on matters arising uh, uh, from some of the national jurisdictions uh, that you are most closely uh, engaged with? Um, any thoughts or response to that? Uh, uh, you know. What's at stake here, of course, is, is ceding some sovereignty over uh, of judicial review to an international body. And of course, it's not possible for the uh, ICTY to do that. It would require a treaty to do that. Most states are uh, very protective of their sovereignty and not likely to do that. However, there are already there are some mechanisms in place. The process of referring uh, international criminal matters to the ICC is, is available to states. But it's not. Uh, uh, 
it would require a lot of exploration, a lot of okay. thought. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for that quick answer. President Robinson, please. It, it might also be possible uh, for that to be done on a regional level, mm -hmm. as distinct from a, a global level. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, Minister Arnott. Of course, I believe our colleague from Nigeria was well aware that we cannot answer how the how an international court could become a lower instance court relative to the national court, but since the Rome Agreement has been ratified by a majority of countries. Now we have the ICC. And in its statute, it has the possibility of taking a case over from a national case if it is established that uh, the proceedings are not going well uh, and uh, the stakes are high, such as in a war crime. And the, the ICC can do that at its own responsibility. But I'm very glad to see that the work of the tribunal has inspired such confidence. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't know if the reference was only to the appeals chamber uh, or, or not, but uh, we'll let that go. Uh, John Hawking, your comments, uh, please, in terms of more specific detail in terms of outreach. Yeah. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, there's also, just on the, the last point, there's also, of course, the, um, the European Court of Human Rights for certain issues. Um, Eric Stover, the last time I heard from you was literally the last century uh, when you did a, we worked together on a report you did on uh, witnesses' responses uh, after their uh, coming to testify at the ICTY, so it's, it's good to hear from you again. Uh, in terms of outreach, um, we've been conducting quite significant uh, internal reflection and review on our current outreach programs um, and looking at where we are today, um, what the environment is today at the ICTY. Uh, we've been looking at the experiences of other outreach programs, such as those at the Special Court for Sierra Leone, the ICC. Um, and so we've been looking at um, the responses as well that there are, the reactions to uh, the tribunal's work uh, generally. Um, there have been a number of reports done by some international organisations that we've looked at. And of course, today's conference is a wonderful uh, opportunity for us to, to listen and get feedback. So we, we're in the process of actually reviewing the structure internally, um, but also to, I think, um, focus our outreach activities. And today, the last two days has confirmed that, in my mind, in two specific areas. One is, as I said earlier, the youth. I think this is a really critical part. And I talked about how we want to work with local actors, because I think, Eric, you asked if... Um, we would be cooperating and of course that's critical to any successful outreach program is that it um, be done um, with full cooperation and support of local actors. The second aspect that I think is very important for our outreach work to try to debunk a lot of the, the quite frank, um, the myths that, that we read and hear about the, the work of the ICTY and that is to work um, to improve our, our visibility in the local media. Um, and I, I think that is the, the other area that, we would, um, that I would like to focus on. We will be doing that in terms of the uh, structure of the tribunal. We have three liaison officers from the registry. We, we have one just starting in Zagreb, in um, Sarajevo, and in Belgrade. And through the work of those liaison officers and local staff, um, I hope 